Welcome back, everybody. You're at the right place to need to know what you need to know to be in the know. Santa Cruz. Say that correctly. <laughs> yeah. Santa Cruz hometown station, AM twelve twenty KHTS. It's the Gazette Radio Hour with Doug and John, and we are pleased to have. Uh, Potential City Councilman elect Alan Ferdman in the studio with us today. You like huh. that title? Oh yeah, it's a pleasure right, being here. Absolutely. <laughs> so you didn't have much of going on this week, did you, Mr. Yeah, Ferdman? Kind of slow? Well, no, actually, it isn't slow because you know, uh, for us, the election doesn't end on election day, and then we have all the work to do to tear signs down and uh, and uh, unload the uh, campaign headquarters. And and I, I'm kind of like a person that never asks anybody to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So. I've been right in the midst of all the physical labor getting it done, and it's uh, it's been a lot of work. So we've been busy. How are you holding up uh, mentally with the results still kind of hanging over everybody's head? Well, that's uh, that's something we just have to deal with, and uh, it's kind of like waiting for election day all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so it is. We'll just uh, we'll just uh, keep it calm and cool and collected, and and uh, wait till Tuesday to get nervous. Now. Just maybe some of the, our listeners right now aren't exactly, you know, aren't familiar with exactly what happened. You want to recap it real fast? Well, at the end of election day, I guess Marcia and Lorraine were uh, were well uh, in the lead, and they uh, certainly uh, have uh, been elected. And Dante and I, Dante is uh, 46 votes ahead of me, and we have uh, about 650 absentee ballots that were dropped off the day of the election, and about 300 provisional ballots. Those have to be certified and counted and so there is the possibility that the uh, election results will change wow so some folks didn't if you don't meet your deadline of mailing your the, the vote will still count if you walk in with it is that what you're saying or that, they arrive that day in the mail that is correct okay so yeah. it, you, you need to get your ballot in either to the uh, the clerk by election day or hand carry it in to the your polling the place and you can drop it off there but those ballots won't get counted on election day because they haven't been certified as being real. I see. Wow. Now, I'd like to go back to that evening as you're sitting there in front of the uh, watching uh, the results come in and the hours and hours go by. What was Alan feeling inside as it started to tighten up and you saw your 40 votes? What kind of emotion does a candidate go through? Well, you know, you're, you're watching things, and, and um, it, it, at first it's not going your way. I think it was down at 7th for a while. And so you're, you're thinking, oh, my gosh, maybe, you know, you're trying to uh, think about whether your message was wrong or who you hadn't talked to, and then all of a sudden you see a surge, and boom, you're up there in fourth position, and you're almost uh, ready to take third. And, you know, the adrenaline starts going, and you start watching, and you're... Uh, you're thinking, hey, this may really work. So it's a it's a roller coaster ride, and it'll remain a roller coaster ride until Tuesday, and we'll see uh, where it ends. So, so are you on pins and needles now, or are you kind of just resign yourself to the fact that he's in a chair, Doug? You know what I mean. <laughs> well, we're kind of numb at this point, you know. We waited for this all to election day, you know. So you ended up with all those emotions to election day, and now all of a sudden you have to do it again. So you kind of numb out. It's kind of uh, just we just wait, and we'll we'll see what happens. No, uh, we won't ask you too much about specifically about the race but uh were you disappointed in the turnout i mean i was it was around 10 percent of them I did the math right in my head yes i i was disappointed in the turnout i i was um what what it tells to what it tells me is that the message in the election the election the information about the election itself and the messages by the candidates just aren't getting out to the majority of the folks here in santa clarita and I think that's a very unfortunate thing because I think if, if the messages were, were more clear and if uh, more people were involved in what's going on in the city today, I would have expected to see the turnout be a lot larger. So low turnout to me means we need to find a better way to get the message out to the public. Do you think that's going to change if they move the election to November um, as part of the settlement of that lawsuit? Well, it probably will. It, it it probably will increase the turnout simply because more people get interested in state and federal elections than they do in city council elections. But I think the messaging is still going to be a problem, uh, unless, as I said, you know, we got to we got to get more people to listen to radio stations. <laughs> there you go. Or read, the to read the Gazette. Or read the Gazette. Yeah, that's it. I'm all for that. There you yeah, go. there you go. <laughs> there you go. So. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's why the incumbents, uh, looking back? Uh, the city council elections for quite some time. Do you think that's why the incumbents have such an easy road to, to, to re-election? Well, I think you have, I think when you, you go through and you look at our city, it's almost like two separate cities. If you go over to one side of the city, everything is pristine and pretty. 
uh, including all the medians, which we all pay for. And, and so the message that the incumbents can, can come out with about look at all the wonderful things we've done and look how we want to keep it that way, you know, probably resonates pretty well over there. And you come over to other parts of the city where the medians are dying, where there are no side panels, and that's where the message of we got to do better for you uh, resonates. So th th it is like almost like you're campaigning in two separate cities. That Go ahead. Oh, I was going to Alan, um, looking back, I, you, I read a comment that you made about if you had um, some things to do different, you would have done some of those things a little differently. What were those? Well, certainly, you know, this was the first real campaign we were this heavily involved in. And being this heavily involved, um, there, there, were certain, there were areas uh, and opportunities uh, with uh, managing our data, with uh, getting out our, uh, our walkers and our, our phone banking. That certainly, if we uh, had if we had more knowledge about it at the time we started, we, we would have done it differently and been able to be more effective. So I think it's a learning experience. The whole thing is, we were extremely busy the whole four months, and we did as much as we possibly could. And so then you look back at it and you're saying, hey, you're going to post mortem it, and you start that as soon as you're waiting to see the election results. Mm, right. You're thinking there's so many things we could have done better. And start second guessing and, yourself and immediately. Second guessing yeah. yourself immediately, and I think that's normal. Yeah. How is the, uh, oh, actually, we did have a question from the studio audience. Uh, she wanted to know about your, your social media campaign. Well, you know, we did, we did a lot of that. We, we, uh, we, we uh, uh, promoted our site. Uh, we boosted a lot of the posts, trying to, uh, especially the posts that showed uh, what our uh, responses were at the different forums. We did that constantly throughout the, um, uh, the last six weeks. And it seemed like, you know, our, our likes jumped up from, you know, just a little over 100 to about 700, seven, you know, a little over 700. Yeah. And so it seemed, and, you know, we were reaching 6,000 people a, a, a boost. So it's, it's um, uh, I thought it was effective, and we'll, that's one of the things we'll do again. It was, I thought, was a, a very easy and effective way to get the message out. Hey, Alan, it's time to take a break. Can you hang on for a few minutes for us? A absolutely. All right. All right, folks, you're listening to uh, the Gazette Radio with Doug and John. We're talking to Alan Ferdman. Uh, what would you call him, John? The potential? Potential city councilman elect. elect. I like that. That's good. <laughs> I get t All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Food Network.